Yeah, it's a little sloppy. <laughs> it's feathering it at all. Hey, so it's been about a day or so since I played with this. And we got a little bit more time to go screw around with it. I'm pretty much feeling that that piston just has so much slop in it that it's probably just leaking right around that. That, that seems a abnormally large amount. So the thing is though, I don't see anything in the bore. The bore actually looks quite well. I'm not sure how well you can see that. But I don't see any scratches or any kind of abuse to the bore part of it. Uh, it can be the valves are just not seating all the way. Let's go if you can find one that. It's possibly a, a, a valve isn't quite down all the way. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go take a wire wheel, go clean some of the crap off the top of it, and uh, maybe we'll get into it, we'll disassemble it, and at least find out what was causing it. Possibly we could fix it. I, I kind of doubt it. Not really worth putting much money into this, but um, at least we can do some exploratory and uh, see what, where we go from there, okay? All right. Let's see we put a little bit of gas on top of the piston. I'm gonna let that sit. Go grab a cup of coffee and come back and see uh, if that recedes down around the rings really fast. It actually looks like it's going down pretty fast right now, doesn't it? Well, again, I'm gonna grab a coffee and uh, we'll come back and see where it is and then start yanking some stuff off. And it's still holding. It's probably been, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Let's crank her down. Hmm. Does that mean it has no crankcase ventilation? Why would it push air up around the cylinder or the piston? And where would the crankcase ventilation be coming out of? Does it have a breather? It does. It has a breather up by the valve cover for the uh, valves. Let's let's go tear it apart a little bit and start looking into it. Let's get those valves out of it and see what they look like. And maybe that whole valve area has an issue. Yeah, remember too, the oil that we took out of this was like molasses. And I have a feeling somebody put really thick, probably gear oil in it to... Uh, keep it running and then I think it just lost so much compression that it died. That's probably why it had such a thick oil in it. Alright, I'm going to sip my coffee and then uh, we'll do a tear down. So, there should be an area for the crankcase to breathe generally through that hole. So you not kill that gasket. I'm going to go grab a scraper, take that gasket off of there. Yeah, that gasket was lost. That's not coming off of there. Let's see. Can I still lean though? to the valves. Not quite sure what that is. I wonder if that's a like a check valve. Yeah, it's, it's probably a check valve for the crankcase. Let's try to launch it across the room. 
I only launched it straight down. I got it. All right. That should be a check valve. Come on. I need a pick with a little screw set up on it. I don't know those should be a diaphragm. There we go. explain why the fluid did what it did bubbling around the I'm gonna get the clamps off I'm gonna turn the engine towards us and we'll get the valves out of there Check how well you can see now I'm gonna go check valve clearance I think it's supposed to be between like four and six it's a five The intake's not an issue. Intake's got five. The exhaust got five too. It's kind of hoping that one of the valves beat themselves down a little further and was not closing all the way because the gap closed up. It says the valve wears, the top of the valve wears that the the whole thing kind of drops down as the stem kind of. This is seven. Seven's going right through. Right, so they got a pretty large gap on them. Let's get them out of there. I need my little funky tool. You guys can see, that's got a little tiny pin in there. Let's see. Must be fun putting that back together. Some load off of it. That looks pretty good. I can see a little bit of debris on the, on the top side of it. That's nah, just oil. I don't see that causing us a problem. Looks like it had good contact all the way around. There's no burns in it. Let's get the other one out and see how that one looks. Let's see if we can get that second one out. Right tool for the right job, right? It'll definitely help with reassembly. It's a little, it's a little funky, doesn't it? I think that'll lap right in though. Let's get that spring assembly out of there. Launch that one across the room while we're at it, right? Put all that back together on the valve. So, intake valve, that looks pretty good. That's been a nice contact patch. I mean, it's war, but the exhaust valve, on the other hand, that's got some hammering going on. And if you look at the seats, I wouldn't say, okay, the intake looks pretty good. The exhaust one, Looking for a dark spot on it, which would be like a blow-by area. And I honestly don't 
see that. All right, let's go in a little further. Let's get down to the crankcase and see if we can get the piston out of it and see how the, the rings look. And that's pretty much what I'm suspecting. Pop that flywheel off. Again, this, this engine's missing the ID tag, so I honestly don't know quite what it is, but it does have a 53 on the flywheel. I don't know if it uses a code for it, and then you gotta go look it up, or is 53 the actual date, H53? That's probably the, uh, the month and year, I would think. We'll find out, or you guys will tell me. Onward and inward. Let's see what we get for oil out of the crankcase now. Again, we drained what would come out of it, and we put fresh oil in it, but I have a feeling the run part of it may have loosened up some of the oh yeah <laughs> I think somebody commented that was the original oil that was in it I think somebody took and put a really thick like probably like a gear oil in it to try to help seal up the rings a little but that's just a guess so far we are going to find out very shortly all right, as long as they don't knock that off the table, we'll be good. I got the two bolts out of the uh, oil pan. Let's see if we can get it to pop. Oh yeah, just sludge on the bottom of that. There's where your dirt's coming from. Yeah. Okay, let's go get that to top dead center. Cam looks a little chattery. Let's uh we get to set the flywheel back on it, put you in the stand. We are down in, and this is called a slinger. What it does is it actually just kind of goes, <clears throat> as the engine is spinning, this dips down into the oil and takes it and, and actually splashes it up on the camshaft into the gears and in the bottom of the uh, the cylinder. It kind of keeps everything lubricated. It has no oil pump. That's kind of just how it works. But anyway, there's some keepers that keeps the two bolts from backing off on the con rod. And we have to go tap those guys open again. I don't know if I can do this with you in a way. Let's go try it. Looks like it's, it's like somebody's been in here before, doesn't it? They look pretty beat up more than uh, I would think a factory would have done. We are gonna find out pretty soon. You finding somebody bored it and just didn't put an oversized piston in it? The only thing it has me is that the, the cylinder board looks so good. I would expect it to see it all. All tore up, you know. Who knows? We need a 716 to go get those crack loose. I may bring you back because I have to go where you guys are. <laughs> They're in the way. Back up. We got it now. Yeah, man. Yeah, I guess a little bit of junk in the trunk on there. It's kind of beat up. Let's get the piston out. What do you think? Stuck rings or burned up rings? I'm going to go for burned up. Side. Go for a rack. 
Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's see. I'll pop that out of there. Terrible. I expected to see much worse. Skirts definitely chewed up. Scrapey. But again, not. Let's go clean that bore up and look inside. I think that crank journal probably looks the worst out of anything. I don't see much in the way of any kind of... I see one score right there, but it's lower. It would not interfere with compression. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. I really don't feel much. There's a slight groove on it. Not much. Hmm. I think maybe we can clean up the valves. Get a better look at that piston. Clean up our whole area over here. Do not see, see stuck valves. You know what I think though? I think those rings might be just hammered. Let me pop you in the stand. The one thing I see that's weird, oh, weird to me anyway, I've never seen a ring that has, see the step that's on the end of it? Oh, you know what it is, it's just, it's not a step, it's, it's undercut all the way through there, and at the very edge the undercut stops, that's all that is. And for a second I thought like, what's the deal with that ring? Doesn't it look like it? So it looks like it, it makes a uh, little L on the end of each side. Yeah, let's see what the other one looks like. And the other one doesn't look like that. Let's pop the rings off, off and we'll put them in the bore one at a time. And we'll look and we'll see how far the ring gap closes up when it's under compression. And if that gap is really large, it's essentially just going to be a path for it to escape. Let's have the top ring off. Let's see if we can get in there by hand. And generally what you do is you take the piston, you put the piston back in and kind of makes it so it's level all the way around. But that does not look terrible. Let's push it down further to where it would normally sit though. Let me get the piston. I miss I still have rings on. Let's use the bottom of it. There we go. And grab a feel gauge and measure that. Okay, so that one has a gap of 32. That's a bit excessive. Not sure what it should be. I'm guessing like seven. So let's go get the other ones off. We'll see how they do. And that's the lower compression ring. It's 35. So 35 is kind of going in there. Yeah, so it's about the same deal. Let's bring it right up to the top. Get it out of the uh, compression spot. I want to see what they close up to. In other words, there really shouldn't be any wear up here because the rings don't travel that high. Okay, right about. I'm going to 
going to say that probably looks like it's your carpenter's eye. 20? Let's go try a 20. 20 fits. Go with, what do you want to go with? Whatever the next one we could find, right? Let's go with 25. 25 does not fit. Oh, like, probably like 22. Now I'm determined. 20, where's our next one? It's hiding. I'm going to go with 22. 22 does not fit. I think I had it at 20. What do you think? Alright, so there's like a 15 thou difference over the whole circumference. It's not 15 thou larger, it's just over the course of the whole ring. <sighs> what do you want to do? I can go try to figure out what that ring gap is supposed to be. If it's supposed to be like, you know, five, then forget it. it it's leaking like a sieve. If it's built kind of loose, then maybe not. Right, so I went in the house and it's a little bit of homework. Again, I, unfortunately I can't ID what this engine actually is because the tag is missing. But for intents and purposes, we're going to go call it a 6RN and go by the numbers off of that. And with that, uh, 7 and 12, I think, were the two specs for how tight the ring can be. And 35 was out of spec, and we were at, I think, 32 and 35, so we were definitely uh, having an issue there. I think more of the issue is not the rings being worn, but the bore is being worn uh, down. If you look at it from an angle, it probably looks like a, more like an hourglass kind of it's fine up top, tapers in a little bit, and then gets larger again. So, having said that, we have no money in this, and I really don't plan on putting any money into it. I'm not going to rebuild it, put piston and rings and bore it, and you know, yada yada. But we can clean it up and put it back together and see if, after lapping the valves and all, and just cleaning everything, if we get the number coming back up. Again, I couldn't get a, pr a compression number, what it's supposed to be. Uh, a lot of the things were saying that they didn't even give a compression spec. What they would do is they would spin the engine backwards and let it bump. If it would bump off the compression and uh, roll forward, it was good. Hey, I, I'm just telling you what I read. So uh, if we get, I saw some numbers like 65 is a good number. We were down to 30 though, so that's not going to uh, make it. Let's clean some stuff, put it back together. The stones I have are pretty much junk, but it's what I have. So we are going to go ahead, still run them. Hopefully not smash into the crankshaft too much. Shrink her down. Hopefully it fits. There we go. Let's see how far I can go down before I hit. Yeah, it's definitely showing a big, big ridge on the top. Now's when everything kind of shows up. Straighten you out a little. Hold on. You can see we're cutting right there. Nothing in the middle, and then down below it picks it up again. So, some scratches starting there, but well, we're not even touching the lower section.
I'll go a little more and then we'll call it quits. What's that kind of? What's that right there? I'm trying to figure out why it's kind of like dotty, probably the best way to put it. I went ahead for about a good 10 minutes. And you can see I brought the the hash pattern on the sides all the way down, but you can see where it's still shiny front and rear. There. And the reason for that is it actually, as the piston is going up and down, it's getting thrust from one side to the other. It's not, you know, because the bottom is on a connecting rod, and it, the connecting rod is going from this side to this side. So it actually thrusts the piston one direction, and it thrusts the piston piston the other direction, and it makes the the uh, cylinder an oval because it, it, it's wearing on this side and it's wearing on that side but the problem is the ring is perfectly round so the ring wants to say stay round is it's much harder than the piston is and um, you get a uh, a leak you know essentially we're going to over exaggerate it there's the ring and there's the cylinder you know it's, it's not contouring to that part of the cylinder in that spot we're going to go leave it like that because I'm literally just out of stones. There's nothing left on the on the grinder. I switched over to brake fluid too, an old can of brake fluid, so I can get a little bit better cut. The oil is a little too uh, too slippery to do anything. So it looks pretty good. Let's go get ready to clean the valves. We'll clean the two valves up and come over and lap them in. Hope you guys will be able to see this. I cleaned off the exhaust valve. Make sure you get focused on what's going on in front of us. And right there, see that how big that ridge is? That's where the seat's been hammering on it. Where it's been hammering on the seat. So that valve is pretty tough. Use the cut. So that could be an issue too. Where it decides as it's because the valve is kind of rotating all the time. And it can have an area that it fits well, it's keyed well, and as it rotates, it doesn't fit as well. And you kind of like, you know, catch at the edge of the groove in one spot. Right, we're gonna go lap that one back in. That's a way too much. Lick it <laughs> and stick it. Hopefully it'll, it'll hold. Yeah, so we're so free. Kind of listen to that. I might have to hot glue that on there. I'm listening to the, uh, the sound of the, the grit. Here it's really coarse at first and then you hear it just kind of like disappear. Pushes all the material out. And it's going to fight us pretty good. The other one goes better. And I just cleaned off the intake. Can we get away with the bigger one? Yeah. I'm a big fan of that plunger. The exhaust has quite a bit of side to side. Surfaces look okay. Valve seat doesn't look terrible. Of course, I'm putting cock on it. But I don't see an area where it was burning. I mean, it takes pretty decent. We will go with those. Let's put the pin back in there.
tires are in the way. There you go. You got it. So to make sure we're not hanging up, sticking out the other side, you know. So you want to make sure that the rings are not like that. They're all lined up. You want to make sure they're kind of staggered away. They do move and float around on their own, but you kind of want to give the thing a fighting chance so that when air leaks through one ring, it has to go down the side of the piston because there's you know there's a wall here, so there's a lot of resistance going down the side, and then exit around the other one. So it has to kind of zigzag going through there. It's moving so fast that um, it actually takes time to go do that, so as long as you don't give it a, a direct path, it should be fine. This is a ring compressor, and its job is going to be to squeeze those together. Hopefully, it goes small enough. Might not. Oh, it's going to be tight. I'm going to put this in a vise. Pull the piston in the vise and uh, getting it tightened up. Oil her up. Piston's already oiled up, rings are oiled up. We want to go just kind of screwed up the bottom of that piston. It's supposed to be sticking out the bottom a little. And it's not. It's uh there we go. And I am just gonna tap that all the way down. So the rings fall in. Now I'm going to work the crankshaft and the, the bottom of the rod together, get them lined up with oil, and cap it back together. All right, so the crankcase is back on, got oil in it, uh, everything but basically the cylinder head. So let's spin it up and we'll see how much oil gets by the rings. Let's probably back you guys up a little, huh? because there is some from assembly you know yeah, decent amount pretty much the same as what it was before and again if that if that jug is oval and the ring's trying to maintain a round circle, even the oil ring, you know, it just leaves that much of a gap and it comes up around it. At some point it'll just run out of oil in the crankcase. She's not very healthy, is she? Oh well. Alright, compression test again. What you guess is, I am going to say, I'm going to say 40 and hope it's 60. How's that? I'm not giving it much faith though. I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> not with that socket, we're not. Five. 
75. We'll go with 75. A lot better than 30. I don't make up the rules. They said spin it backwards. If it bounces off of it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I go with it. The gas is still off. It all back together. Yeah. I can see gas going through. A little bit of dirt. Shall we? Uh, let's go give her some choke. Back to where we started. I always wonder why, when, only when it cranks, that it's uh, leaking though. Okay. Let's see how. I think we're all the way in. Let's give it a little bit more RPMs. battery needs to get changed. Yes, it does.
and before I forget, as long as it focuses. So, sediment bowl. Yes, sediment will go in the bottom of the sediment bowl. Water, uh, a lot of times you can see water in the bottom, but it will uh, get the sediment as uh, a fuel filter type. It gives a little valley for any uh, debris to fall out because the gas isn't really flowing through very fast. It, it doesn't use gas very quickly for, so the gas kind of goes in here for a moment and uh, the par particulates can settle out of it and then from the top the fuel comes back out again and out the fuel line. So sediment bowl does work.